Hey guys, so into this video we're going to be talking about the ethics of biotechnology. And I just want to kind of get your thoughts on this. Maybe these are some questions that you want to talk about with your family around the dinner table or something you want to talk about with your friends. But it's good to think of ethical considerations, especially during this unit in biology. Alright, so first of all, what are ethics? Ethics are the rules or standards that govern the way people behave and their decisions on the right thing to do. There's no clear right or wrong position in ethics, as a person's individual experience, culture, education, and overall view of the world often guides the way they make ethical choices. Ethical views can evolve and change over time as society's values change too. So for instance, someone with a strong environmental outlook might see the use of genetically modified or GM crops as unnatural, but someone with a strong scientific-based view of the world might see the use of GM crops uh, as a natural extension of traditional crop breeding technologies. So there, there are particular ethical considerations um, and positions that are commonly shared, um, such as the view that it's essential for all biotechnology products to be safe for humans and the environment. That's a common ethical consideration and view um, that most people agree on, but there's others that don't. So I'm going to bring up some of those topics and uh, hopefully, I'm not going to give any answers on them, but hopefully uh, you guys can form your own opinions as you learn more about the topics. Okay. So, there are particular ethical positions that are commonly shared, such, such, such as it is essential for all biotechnology products to be safe for humans and the environment. Okay, um, here's a good little uh, background paragraph, which I'm going to read to you, and then uh, you guys can sort of think about it on your own. Should BT corn be sold across the world? Yes or no? So, BT corn has a gene inserted from bacteria. The plant produces the bacterial protein, which kills the corn root worm rootworm. Before Bt corn, farmers would spray pesticides to protect their crops. These pesticides would get into local water and would not last throughout the growing season, but Bt corn is protected throughout the growing season. The Bt corn product was tested for over 10 years in a lab and went through two years of government regulation and review before put on the market. Bt corn has been growing in the United States since the mid-1990s and is still under government regulation. Okay. With those facts in mind, take a minute to think about what do you think about BT corn? Do you need more information? Um, is this not enough to make a decision on? Do you, what do you still need to know? And then um, think about your position. Okay. Do you believe every product sold with a GM or genetically modified ingredient should be labeled? It is estimated that 85% of U.S. corn and 91% of soybeans are genetically modified. 70% of all processed food on supermarket shelves like soda, soups, crackers, and condiments contain a genetically engineered ingredient. It is very hard to have a diet that is completely GM-free in today's modern society and economy. Um, so what do you think? Do you think every product sold with a genetically modified ingredient should be labeled? All right. Take a second, think about it. Maybe you need to do some more research. Write your questions down. Okay. Do you think the U.S. government should regulate all genetically modified organisms? Yes or no? The Food and Drug Administration, FDA, is currently reviewing and regulating a genetically engineered salmon, the Aqua Advantage salmon, that grows twice as fast as wild Atlantic, Atlantic salmon. This fish will be sold for people to eat. However, a new genetically engineered pet fish called the glowfish is not regulated. And we talked about this when we talked about GFP. So what do you think? Do you think the U.S. government should regulate all genetically modified organisms, even pets that are not going to be released into the wild? Or potentially they could be, and that's why you think that they should be regulated. All right, take a second and think about it. Okay, this is an interesting one. Researchers have injected human genes into the fertilized eggs of domestic animals, for example, pigs. One reason for making such a pig is to make drugs in the milk of the pig. Another reason is to make internal organs adapted to humans. Hemophilia is a disease where people cannot stop bleeding. Do you agree or disagree that it is acceptable to make genetically modified pig that would produce medicine for a person with hemophilia if the pig did not die? So we are saying in this circumstance the pig is not harmed. Do you agree or disagree that it is acceptable to make a GM pig that would produce medicine for this person or these people with hemophilia if it was possible? All right. Stop and think about it. Think about questions you still have. What research do you need to do? Okay. Heart transplants occur infrequently because donor human hearts are very rare. Is it acceptable or not acceptable to genetically modify pigs for heart transplants in humans? What do you think about that one? 
All right, so those are all the ethical uh, questions I have for you today, but there's plenty more. So as you think of more of them, or as you hear that something in the news that might have a biotechnology and ethics component to it, feel free to bring it to class, and I'm happy to have these discussions with you. Again, I'm not here to provide you with the answers, just to uh, hopefully get you to ask more questions. All right, thanks, guys.